Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you do your best to just keep clear of the arena entrance. These engines are quite uh, heavy and cumbersome. And speaking of heavy and cumbersome, the first engine that comes into the arena for the Sunday parade is George. And uh, I'm sure the owner won't be offended by me telling you they are I think it's the rollers, the most common of the engine. We're being out in the nicest possible way. I think it's more than no more steam rollers than all the other manufacturers put together. This one was new to Essex County Council in 1917. One of a batch of 10 or 12, I believe. Uh, Essex Council sold it to scrap to Arthur Clark. Arthur Clark sold it to Taylor Brothers. He put it back on contract to Essex County Council. Been known for a number of years now by Dad Chizzy from Colchester. He's had a complete rebuild carried out on the boiler. This is a 10 ton roller. When you really about a track to do the later, they tend to be denoted more by uh, horsepower, but rollers is done on the way. And although she's a 10 ton roller, she's on the way to getting off to 14 tons. An interesting point on this roller as it comes around, you see the scarab fire fitted on the rear wheel on your side. That's an implement for tearing up the road surface. Now you might think tearing up the road surface isn't a very good idea. But in the days before hogging, uh, you know, the days before tarmac when roads were made of hogging and rolled in, the road used to break up. You know, scarify, you could drop some tines into the road, tear up the road surface and roll it flat again. You ride it up and down with the little wheel that you can see just behind the rear roll. So that's George, the uh, angling roller. This is followed by Bodicea. Now Bodicea is the first of our steam wagons in the arena this, uh, this afternoon. And there's two definite schools of thought when it comes to steam wagons. Foden on the whole favoured the overtight wagon, and that's what this one is coming towards me now, is that it has the engine over the boiler. So normal traction and contraction, and then a chain going down to the rear axle. This one works for my journey, and has been the Bracken and Collection for many years, now owned by the Sword of Strength and Stockholm, driven by Mr. Chris Way. You see it's fitted with solid rubber tyres, the windscreen to protect the driver from the elements. Now I hope you're all paying attention, because there might well be a test afterwards, but that's the overtight wagon. So if the Sentinel makes it in, we'll then be able to uh, tell you a little bit about the difference between the two. Followed by Mr. Neil Ayers with his Aveling Roller Sydney. So named because he spent his working life in Australia. It was exported when new. And it was actually exported in steam tractor form because it attracted a lower rate of the excise duty and it was then converted to a roller once it arrived in uh, Australia. It was really patronated. He's been owned by Neil now for a number of years and he uh, drove here from his home the uh, Alcetta play on Friday took him a number of hours under his own steam. A lovely little roller, that one. That's an eight-ton roller. First of our road locomotives is the Duke of Kent, an engine that's been seen at Haddon several times over the years. An engine that worked in Kent, hence the name, for C. Tassel. Now owned by Lord Irving Raidlaw, just by Mr. Jeff Cockcomer. Road locomotives were built for transport and haulage of heavy loads. So, now compared to the normal agricultural engine, which I'll talk about in a moment, it's got refinements such as rubber tyres, an extra gear, so three speeds rather than two, making it quicker between jobs, and the front tank or belly tank, you can easily see that, increases the range. An agricultural engine might do 10 or a dozen miles on a fill of water, and a road engine like this might do 25 or 30 with considerate driving. So that's the uh, Duke of Kent, and it was uh, a well-loved engine, often seen in the region when it was owned by Steve Neville, and then later by Keith Honor. Number 20, first of our agricultural engines to come into the arena, the basic traction engine, this one. This is a barrel engine built in St. Ives, so not built a million miles away. Number 180 was the second to last, and built in 1922. It was exhibited new at the Royal Agricultural Society show in Cambridge. And Sal didn't overly change the design of their engine, so the 1922 engine is very similar to uh, the ones made at the turn of the last century. This one worked in Cambridgeshire. He was rescued for preservation wow. by the uh, late Bob Humphrey. He sold his Royal Wells 
who restored her, put her back in the sea. Uh, he took her off the road in the 1970s for a time, but due to various reasons, he got her to work completed, but never actually got to a stage where he could take the engine out. And uh, in more recent years, I've been told to Stuart Hines, the current chairman of the Exchange and Practice Society, and driven the day by his father, Alan. So that's the foul, an interesting feature on a foul engine. If you look at the front wheels, you'll see compared to the other engines that come round, they're under the boiler rather than under the plate box. That makes the engine a shorter turning circle so that when you're in a tight stackyard, it's easier to manoeuvre. That was the theory.